Hi, my name is Mylon Lefevre, and music is in my blood. I got my first big break when Elvis Presley recorded a song I'd written at 17 years old. That moment changed my life forever. I went from having nothing to having my dreams come true. I toured the world and played with some of the biggest names in music and had more money than I knew what to do with. I finally hit rock bottom when I almost died from a drug overdose, and it became painfully obvious something had to change. Everything did change when I gave my life to Jesus at a second chapter of Acts concert in 1980. God instantly delivered me from drugs and totally turned my life around. I began to use my gift of music for the Lord and started a Christian band, Mylon and Broken Heart. It eventually grew to be one of the biggest Christian rock bands in the world at the time. We won several Grammys and Dove Awards, but most importantly, we led over 200,000 kids to Christ. Now, years later, I'm still living for Jesus and my wife, Christy, and I travel the globe proclaiming God's goodness. I've been from rock bottom to the mountaintop and I'm going all the way to heaven. So come on and join me on the road to freedom. On the Road to Freedom, you've joined us in gorgeous Palm Springs, California, and it is an absolutely beautiful, perfect day. God is so good. This is the day Amen. the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And we are so glad that you've joined us. It is an honor and a privilege. Every time we get to minister the word to you, we do not take it lightly. Mm -hmm. And why don't you let your friends and family know that On the Road to Freedom is on. We'd love the opportunity to share Jesus with them. And you know, I wanna encourage you today that the reason why we do this show is because John 8, 31 and 32 says, if you will, Jesus said this, King Jesus said, if you will continue yeah, in my word, on, then you truly are my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. So our heart for you today is that you receive revelation knowledge of the truth of his word. Yeah. Because when it's revealed to you, when I say revelation, that's that aha moment. Yeah, that's when on. you look at the word and you go, oh, I get it. An epiphany. And then when you really get it, when Rhema comes to you, you can apply it. You can walk in it that's and it. you can do it. And that's when you start seeing true victory in your life like you've never seen before. So today I believe you're receiving revelation of the truth that's going to set you Amen. free and free indeed. And today we're talking about a fun subject. We're talking about going up. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever gotten into an elevator and someone said going up. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I was pondering on this and that is the direction that God always intends for us to go yeah. is up. Higher and better. That's right. Amen. Come on, bring it on. <laughs> what you believe is going to determine what you can receive yeah, today. Yeah, that's right. You got to believe because it's the truth that God loves you and he wants to bless you. Yes. It is the plan of God. He said, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. There's the Lord. And they're yeah. to prosper and bless you, not to harm you. Mm -hmm. They're good plans. Yes. And they never change. Even if bad stuff happens, yeah. God's plan stays the same. Amen. And if you'll stick to God's plan, those things will eventually come around That's your right. Life. Amen. We're anointed to go just in this one direction. Amen. Deuteronomy says it this way. To Deuteronomy 28 yeah. and verse one. If you'll listen diligently to the voice of the Lord your God. Now notice the word if. That means you have a choice. This will not automatically happen to you because you go to church. Mm. You will not be blessed because you go to a place with a steeple that has a choir that sings there. You will only be blessed oh, that's if good, you mm. will listen diligently yeah. to the voice or the word mm -hmm. of the Lord your God, being watchful to do all his commandments, which I commanded you this day, the Bible says, the Lord your God will set you high, high. above all the nations above. of the earth. Yeah, there's that above. direction up. We're up. going up now. <laughs> We're going up. <laughs> now this is Old Testament, I understand <laughs> that, but God has not changed. No, we have a better right. covenant. The covenant between the Old Testament and the New Testament the covenant changed, but God's the same. Mm -hmm. he, he's the same today, yesterday, and forever. He never changes. 
So this word will still work for you. He said, you get to choose. Deuteronomy 28, 13, the Amplified says, and the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail, and you shall be above. Here we're going up again. Yeah, only, we're going up. <laughs> and you shall not be beneath <laughs> That's good. if you Amen. heed the commandments. Now notice, these are not the suggestions of yeah. the Lord your God. Mm. Not if you receive him as your God. He's yeah. my God. He commands me. I'm mine. I don't negotiate. Yeah. I want his will. Amen. I trust him more than I trust me. That's what it means to receive him and trust him. Yeah. That's yeah. what faith is. I trust the Lord. Mm -hmm. He knows what's best. He knows the future. I don't. He knows what she's doing, what she's thinking. Yeah. So he knows how to help me to be a good husband, mm -hmm. one that will help her to be who he's called her to be. I don't know all these things. I need his help, and you do too. That's good. Yeah. He said, if you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day and are watchful to do them, mm -hmm. then you'll be above only. Mm -hmm. Philippians 3 and verse 14 says, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Again, that's the will of God for you, yes, is to go is. up. We're going up. Yes, it's it an is. upward call. Amen. Job 22 and verse 28 in the Amplified says it this way. You shall also decide and decree a thing. Now notice, this is you. This is not God choosing this for you and saying it over you. This is you. Yeah shall decide and decree a thing. You'll make a determination in prayer in the presence of God. You'll see in the word, when I needed a wife and I was divorced and my ex-wife did not want to walk with me in the things of God anymore and she left, I needed help and I didn't trust me. And it was a hard time and I, I asked God for help and I asked him to help me to choose a godly wife. And he said, Decide, so you've made a decision to go with God first. Instead of looking for a good looking woman, you're gonna trust God that if her heart's pure, that God will give you his best. That's the, basically what I asked him for. And he did, but I had to decide and I had to decree it. So I, I prayed it and I said it, I decreed it. And it says, and it shall be established for you what you decide and decree. And the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways when they make you, the, you know who they are, the, the circumstances, the situation. Yeah. When they make you low, no. you will say. You won't say, oh man, this is a bad day. I'm having a hard time. No, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah, no, right. you will say there is a lifting up. Up. And the humble person, <laughs> God lifts up and Amen. he saves. Amen. The humble person, not the proud person. The proud person is not going to ask for help. That's the proud right. person just going to, go and try yeah, to make it better make it happen. in yeah. their own power and their right. own might. But the humble guy is going to ask God for help. So how many times have we looked at each other in a situation that looked bad and we've both said out there loud, is a there lifting is up a lifting and up. exaltation has amen, come. Amen, amen. Exaltation, promotion has come. Yeah. So again, I want you to get the point here. The bottom line of this show is when people say, so how are you doing? You need to say, I'm going up. I'm going up. It's <laughs> getting better. It's getting I better and better. Wait. I'm going up. Amen. God is good. And in one of those ways that you're going up is financially. Yeah. I want to remind you today Bring and that. encourage you that God has blessed you with prosperity. Yes. Now that word is a buzzword now. And we've actually been counseled well, that we shouldn't use that term, it. that we shouldn't use the word prosperity. And I was praying over that one day and the Lord spoke to me and said, Christy, it's the word that I use. Prosperity is the word that's in the Bible. And so we use so it we and we're use, not ashamed of it. That's right. <laughs> and we, we I mean, have prospered and I'm gonna look you right now and tell you, it doesn't Amen. matter whether anybody gets mad at me or not. I'm going to continue to prosper. Right. Because I'm a tither and I'm a giver. Amen. And you cannot outgive God. No, you can't. When we do things His way, He blesses you so that you can bless more folks. And that's the reason for prosperity. Yeah. It's not for me. Nope. It's for, so that I can help others. So prosperity is the word that God uses and God's a good God. So that means prosperity is a good thing. Okay. Amen. And prosperity, I want to define for you simply means to be successful. That's the definition of prosperity. That's Success right. and prosperity are interchangeable words. 
Yeah. In the Webster 1828 dictionary, to prosper means to succeed in an enterprise or an activity, especially to achieve economic success good, in your buddy. finances. That's right. It means to become strong. See, how could the enemy deceive us into thinking this word is a negative to get Christians to draw back from using the word prosperity? It's just a deception of well, the enemy. Well, you can't decree prosperity if you're afraid to if say it. If you're afraid to say it, exactly. Yeah. So this word means for you, God wants you to become strong and to flourish in the earth. In Wikipedia, I like this definition too, prosperity is the state of flourishing. It's the state of thriving. It means good fortune. It means successful social status. Well, that sounds like God to me. Prosperity, because that's all he does is good things. That's all mm, he wants for on, his buddy. children. Prosperity often encompasses wealth, but it also includes other factors which can be independent of wealth, meaning happiness and health. And you know, the word proves in Third John 2, it says, Beloved, I pray above all things that you would prosper and be in health, yeah. even as your soul yeah. prospers. So we need to not draw back from using the term prosperity because God said his plan for us is to prosper us. And we need to know what that means. Good, Psalm man. 35, 27 says, Let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. Let them say continually. Now this is the Lord instructing us on what we need to say. Let the Lord be mm. magnified who takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. So mm, the Lord right good, here baby. is instructing us. We need to say, let the Lord be magnified. He takes pleasure in prospering me. Yes, now if does. you need to think about it, he takes pleasure in making my life successful. Yeah. Making my family successful, my health successful. Just like you do if you love your kids. Amen. You take pleasure in blessing them. Yeah. If you love your wife, you want her to prosper. Right, that's God right. God wants you to prosper. Why right. would you not want to prosper? That's Why right. Why would you think that God wants you to be poor and suffer and have not be able to go to a decent doctor when you need it or get a good education for your child? Yeah. There is a thief that comes to steal and kill and destroy. He wants to get your prosperity mm -hmm. and steal it away from you. Right. You can't bless people who are going to Africa to do missionary work or going into prisons if you can't pay your own rent. Right. He wants right. you to be in poverty and lack. The word says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not shall want not or want. lack. Yeah. Praise God. Praise so God. So prosperity is God's idea and he wants to give it to you. Hey, all you precious Team Milan people, let me read you something. <laughs> God said in Acts 1 and verse 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you'll be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere to the ends of the earth. Yeah. That's what you're a part of every day. You're not just going witnessing. You are a 24-7 witness yeah. all over the world. You're doing your part. We're doing ours, and God's doing his. Love you, Team Milan. Thank you.
again, we're talking about going up, right? So we're talking about yeah. in this area, we're going up in our finances. Amen. Amen. We're prospering. Now, what is true prosperity? Because it's yeah. not all about money. No, well, money is what people right. think of when you start talking about prosperity. Right. Third John 2, Christy quoted this. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper and be successful in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. Now, your, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. As your mind prospers and your will, you set your will to do the will of God. That's prospering from God's point of view. Yeah. And your emotions, you, you prosper in your emotions when you get them under control. You stop being That's a drama good. queen and getting offended at everybody and, and just assassinating people spiritually when they do something you don't like and you walk away from their lives forever. Mm -hmm. That's not the will of God. God's plan for you, again, we read this a second ago, or I quoted it in Jeremiah 29, 11. I want to read it to you in the NIV. For I know the plans I have for you, declares <laughs> yeah. the Lord, plans to prosper you yes. and make you successful, yeah. not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a magnificent future, a future in God, Amen. in Christ Jesus. Now what we did there is because the words prosper and success are interchangeable, I want you to think about that. When you read the word prosper, if it's easier for you to understand, that means success. Yeah. So God wishes that you would prosper or be successful in all of these areas. Right. His plan for you is that He is prosperity, but that means His plan for you is to make you successful in this life. That's right. And how we cooperate with God's plan of success and going up is number one, we gotta be a giver because we are blessed to be Ooh, a blessing. Don't rush this one, this is so important. Yeah. People that don't understand prosperity think it's, it's about, about getting money. It's oh, not, yeah. it's about giving money. That's it. It's about giving That's mercy. Good. It's Amen. about giving other people a second chance and a third chance and a 50th chance like God did for me and you. Yeah. Proverbs 11:25 in the NLT says, the generous, we're talking about being a giver in order to prosper. The generous will prosper or yeah. the generous will be successful. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Good, baby. So if you're stingy, you're not gonna prosper. Nope. If you're greedy, you're not gonna prosper. If your life is only about you, you're not gonna prosper. And, and most of the time it's the fearful that won't prosper. Yeah. They're afraid if they give God their tithe, yes. that they're gonna run out and they're not gonna have enough to eat. And mm -hmm. so they're afraid that God is gonna rip them off. Yeah. They're afraid that if they sow that seed into that ministry, what if that preacher does so-and-so? You ain't giving it to that preacher. You're supposed to be giving it to God. The tithe belongs to, and the offers, they belong to the Lord. Once I release them to the Lord, it doesn't matter if the preacher burns them in a barrel. <laughs> God knows that I gave it to him and God will make it come back to me in the harvest, amen? That's right. There's four things you gotta do and this is guaranteed. Mm -hmm. As Deuteronomy says, you choose this day the, the blessing or the curse. If you choose the blessing of God, and you choose it all day with every choice you make. Right. All day, every day, you make choices. But if you choose obedience and you choose faith or trust, then you're gonna need these four things. But if you do these things, wealth and blessings are guaranteed. You have to decide, first of all, to believe that God is honest. Yes. Secondly, you bring the tithe into the storehouse. Amen. That is not, you don't give it. He said, bring, bring it. it. If you don't bring it, Malachi, the third chapter, says that if you don't bring it, you're robbing God. Now, if you rob God, you're gonna, the devil's gonna rob you. That's the way that works. But if you bring the tithe into the storehouse, tithing is the second thing. You gotta believe God, then you gotta tithe, yeah. then you gotta sow seed. Seed starts at 11% of your mm. increase. Yeah. The first 10, I just bring it to him. It belongs in the kingdom of God. And it, I send it wherever he tells me to. Wherever, if, I, if it's in my church or to Brother Copeland or to other ministries, there's a bunch of them that we support in different places around the world for that, that are doing other things better. Taking care of orphans, we're not as good at that. There are people who that's the anointing on their life, so we support them to do that, etc. Feeding the 
hungry. I mean, uh, ministering to Israel. We have other ministries. Giving is, is the third thing. It's not an option. And the last thing is patience. If you want to have wealth, you're going to have to wait on the Lord. You sow mm -hmm. there. As long as the earth right. remains, there's seed time and harvest. Seed is when you sow your finances or you sow your mercy or you sow whatever you're sowing in people's lives yeah. in the kingdom. But there's a time in the middle where you're waiting on the Lord. You're waiting on that seed to grow. But if you wait on the Lord, how long? I can't tell you the answer to that. Only God can. But there is a season of waiting and then harvest is guaranteed. Yeah, you sow God. that seed, give, and it'll be given unto you. Press down, shaking together and running over. Yeah. Men will give into your bosom or into your life, your yeah. ministry, your project that God's called you to. That's the way it works. And it is a fruitful life and it works every time on time. Now again, what we're talking to you about is how do we cooperate with God's plan to prosper you? God's successful plan that He already has laid out for you, how do we cooperate and receive that into our lives? Yeah. We've talked to you about being a giver. Now I wanna to talk to you about just living a fruitful life. Proverbs 13, four says, lazy people want much but get little. <laughs> but those who work hard will prosper. That's true. Those who work hard that will be successful. So this is a principle mm -hmm. of the kingdom of God. So you are not too old. Let me say this. You are not too old mm -hmm. to work hard, to be fruitful Amen. and to live a productive life. That's you know, right. my husband is 75 and most people would mm -hmm. think he should be retired <laughs> sitting at home drinking lemonade by the pool and that's all he does and ride his Harley. That now we do some now. of that. I, we yeah, do we some, do of, some that. of that. But our lives are about Jesus. It's not about us. No. And the call of God is without repentance. And there's not an age limit on that. The blessing of the Lord is to be fruitful That's and right. multiply. That's so right. that being fruitful is about being productive for the kingdom. Oh, and you're goodness. never too old to be productive. No, you're God not. will show you his plan and his way for the season that you're at in your life for you to continue to be productive for him. So we're never too old and we're never too young. Let me say that. Ooh, Second good. Thessalonians 3.10 says, for even when we were with you, we commanded you this, if anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. Now I know that is strong. Those are strong words. But this principle of if you really want to prosper in the Lord, if you want to be successful, you're going to have to be a diligent, a wise steward of what he entrusts you with, a good steward. Now listen, there's yeah. a guy running for election right now mm -hmm. that claims to be and admits to be a yeah. socialist. Yeah. That means take money from anybody that's working hard and give it to people and yeah. just give it to people who mm -hmm. stay home mm -hmm. and don't work. Yeah. Give everybody the same. Take from the rich and give to the poor. Or it might have <laughs> worked for Robin Hood, but it's not what the Bible says. The Bible says if you don't work, that's you so don't good, eat. That's so good, Miley. So good. Being lazy, it's a great excuse, you but will the bottom not prosper. line is you have excuses or mm -hmm. you just get the job done. Right, and then once you make that commitment, here's what's wonderful. The grace of God shows up and empowers you to do what you couldn't do on your own at 75. That's right. That's so it's right. by the grace of God we're doing it, but He just requires you to make the decision. You make the choice. Amen. So That's good, the other part, there's another aspect of cooperating with God's prosperous, successful plan for your life is to have a humble heart, a teachable heart. That's right. Proverbs 16, 20 says, those who listen to instruction will prosper. Amen. Those who listen to instruction will be successful. Those who trust in the Lord will be joyful. Joyful. Ooh, that's good. Come on, I'll so take So we should all be smiling. If you really trust God, you need to be smiling <laughs> right, right now. That's Amen. Right. And you need to be quick to repent. <laughs> I mean, it does. And it's not fun, repent. but yeah. I'm telling you, it's mm -hmm. part of part of it. Proverbs it. 28 and verse 13 says it this way: He who cover even the dogs are in agreement. <laughs> he who covers <laughs> his sins will not prosper. Yeah. But whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Okay. James 4 and verse 6 says it this way. God opposes the proud, but gives grace, grace to, to the, the humble. humble. That's I it. cannot tell you how important I need grace. When I was the Lord of my own life, I just messed it up. Every good thing in my life is, 
happens when I humble myself and say, yes, Lord, I'm yours to command. Show me your way, the way, and I will do things that way. He says here in Psalm 25, in verse 12 and 13 in the NLT, who are those who fear the Lord? He will show them the path they should choose. They will live in prosperity. I'm going to say it again. They will. This is they God's will live word, in, not some preacher. Yeah, amen. They will live in prosperity and be successful, and their children will inherit the land. Again, obedience is involved, so I'm going to read this out of Deuteronomy, and then Christy's going to close us out here. Deuteronomy 29 and 9 in the NLT says, Therefore, obey the terms of this covenant, the word of God, yeah. so that you will prosper and be successful in everything. everything that you do. That's an offer from God. I think I'd take him up on that one if I were you. So again, I just want to remind you, we're talking about going up. We're talking about increasing. We're talking about you not being fearful about using the term prosperity that you can prosper in God and it's yeah. a term that he uses and he has spoken over you because he wants you to live a successful life. Yeah. So in order for us to cooperate with his plan, we need to be a giver. We need to live fruitful, productive lives. We need to be humble, quick to repent, have a reverence for him and make a commitment to live a life of obedience to the word of God. That's By his right. grace, That's we can right. do it. And Psalms 1, I believe, wraps this all up and says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Yes. He doesn't stand in the path of sinners. Now, this That's is a man right. or woman. That's doesn't right. sit in the seat of the scornful. But your delight is in the law of the Lord. And mm. in his law do we meditate day Thank and night. You, Lord. That's yeah. the key. Yeah. Then... We will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water yeah. that brings forth fruit in its season. There's the productivity of fruitful life whose leaf shall not wither. When you and, get older. That's right. Come on, Ooh somebody. Ooh, that's Hit good. Me, oh, you're supposed oh, to high five. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> okay, now we'll do this. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so his leaf shall not wither. And now this is the bottom line. And whatever, whatever he, does, he or does, she does or she does shall prosper. And be successful. And, be, and that means what? Shall be successful. Yeah, whatever you, you do. Jesus. So that's you, our Lord. prayer for you today, that you would prosper in all things. Prosper yeah. in your health in yep. your family, in your marriage, and yes, even in your finances, that we are all going up. So stay in the Word. Stay encouraged by the Word. Study the Word. Keep it in your mind. Meditate on it. Continue. And also continue to speak it. And that will keep you on, on the, the road, road to freedom. freedom.